All right, my name is Ethan Lemcool, and I have here the February Women's Baller of the Month, Ellie Shipfer, for an interview. Congrats, Ellie. Any thoughts on winning the award, or how do you feel about it? Um. Well, thanks. I guess. Yeah. No, I was excited. Um, ODC felt like a good tournament, and I hadn't had one in a while. I felt like so. It was nice. But yeah. Um. So we got to start off with the basics. Why did you choose Miami? What do you study there? Um, yeah, I don't really have a good answer to that question. Um, it was between Miami and OSU, and for the longest time it was OSU. So, like, everybody in my family thought that that's where I was going to go, including me. Um, but then, yeah, at the last second, I was kind of like, mm, maybe God's calling me somewhere different. So went to Miami instead. Um, I study kinesiology with a minor nutrition, so I'm planning to go to PA school at the end of it. So, any uh, any schools in mind for PA school? Right now, it's Kettering. So, as assuming everything goes as planned, um, I'm going to go to Kettering in May. Nice, congrats. Nice. That's on that. Um, so over the pandemic, it looked like Miami might go defunct. Oh. And for a while there, it was a bit sketchy. And you kind of brought them back out of that hole. And now they're back to being a full team at almost every tournament this semester. How did you do that? Take me through what the process was like. Um, I have to give most of that credit to Anna, I feel like. Um, yeah, so when I was a sophomore was when we were all home for COVID. Um, and we picked up a few people like that was when like Ethan and Reed picked up like Jay, Leo, Ryan. So we actually did get a few recruits who stuck around. But yeah, I think Anna, Xander and I were kind of I mean, and Jake were like the only four people left at that point, really, who like kind of knew what it was like to actually go to a tournament. So mega fair, we were just talking to literally anybody that we could. Um and then, yeah, thankfully we caught a group of people who, like, actually wanted to stick around. Um, and we were a little worried about just because since it is a rebuilding year, like, I think skill level-wise, I mean, everybody kind of saw last year that we were definitely having to start from the ground up. But we really focused, especially Anna, just, like, really focused on, like, team bonding and, like, making sure that people actually enjoyed being there. And I think that that was kind of what actually, like, had us, like, give, gave us returners this year. So, this is our second year together. So thankfully we didn't really lose anybody after the past year. Yeah, it's been fun to watch you guys get better from especially last year till now playing you guys. Um, so do you have any pre or post game rituals or like a pregame song that you go to or anything in specific? Um, I'm a big country person or like big time rush. So Obviously, my team loves both of those uh, genres or bands, but um, yeah, huge coffee drinker before a tournament. So usually Starbucks or Duncan involved in that somewhere. Um, I'd say for post game, we love Chick Fil A, so we've gone to Chick Fil A quite a bit. I gotta time. ask you, what is your favorite big time rush song? Okay, I would say when Paralyzed came out, because that was a song that I loved, but, like, it was never on Spotify. So I feel like that, at that point, has kind of taken it. But the If I Forget, or, like, the I'll Forget About You song like that, I can't think of what it's called. That one is a banger, I will say. But really, any Big Time Rush song, I feel like is good. Just saying. Word. Um, who's your favorite person or team to play against in the NCDA. Like if you're going to a tournament and you see this team on the schedule, you get excited. Who would that be? Not OSU. I mean, I'm kind of over it, but no, I would say uh, I would give it a tie between you guys and UC. I enjoy when our teams interact. Um, I'm excited for a matchup again on April 1st. Because we'll actually have a full roster for that one. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, I feel like we're most, like, we're friends with most of the Ohio teams anyway. So it's always just, like, fun when we get to do that. But I'll let you guys duke out who's, like, top. But. All right. Um, 
so obviously this year especially there's been a huge growth in the women's development side of things and the first uh all women's tournament was earlier in the year um do you have any thoughts about that or the future or what do you like better no sting or pinch I personally like pinch better. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I like to catch and no sting is a lot harder to catch. Um, I tend to absorb it and that they just bounce off of you. So it's, a, it's just like very different. But um, yeah, I personally like pinch better. But the women's tournament was a lot of fun, which I was slightly skeptical of just because it was our first time like playing like independently. But yeah. Um, like Rennie um, did a phenomenal job and everybody else who like helped out with it. So it was a lot of fun. Um, would definitely recommend doing it again. I think I can see schools having more women where you can have more like independent teams like Akron and Michigan State kind of have right now. But I think we're still looking at a few years ahead of us before that kind of happens consistently for everybody. I agree. It's good to see the growth. And hopefully it does continue to grow, like you said. Mm -hmm. um, so your jersey number, 32. Is there any reason you chose that number or what's special about it, if anything, I guess? Um, That was my number for basketball throughout high school. I liked it because it was my older sister's number. Um, And then, yeah, I feel like I stuck with it all throughout um, high school. So when I got to college, it just made sense. But so, yeah. All right, you mentioned your older sister. You also have a younger sister that's a senior. Do you think you can uh do you think you can convince her to join the NCDA if she goes to a school with a team? I've tried. So we'll see. I mean, like I think that she'd be phenomenal at it, but I'm working on it. We'll see what happens. She liked the tournament. She went to ODC and watched. So she said that she thought that was cool. But we'll that's see. Good. If we'll she goes there too, hopefully we can recruit it. <laughs> She is a little baller, so I will say she's very athletic. So any team would be lucky to have her. But I am impartial. So I told my Miami team if she ever visits, we gotta we gotta lock her down. So. Right. Um kind of touched on that earlier. Um just to wrap up with the interview. Do you have any bold predictions for your tournament on April 1st or at Nationals? Anything you want to say? I would say for OSU and OU to expect a different outcome. Um, definitely a different score. But, yeah, for Nationals, I mean, I don't know. I feel like everybody's kind of up in the air right now. You think that you, like, have a ranking and then everybody kind of blows it out. I will say this. I will be sincerely shocked if Michigan State is not at least in the finals. That's it's it. not very bold of a prediction, but <laughs> yeah, no, because it's going to get everybody mad. But I would say, if I could pick a final two right now, I would say Michigan State and UC. Jamie would be close to that, but we'll see. I, you asked for a bold prediction. Okay, that's fair. All right. Well, 